um, as a witch in this age, I kind of have a problem with the heteronormative, heteronormative jargon that takes up most of the craft. It, it actually seems like it is part of the fabric of the craft to uh, pair female and male deities up and have this uh, heterocentric uh, parental figures ahead of a coven that almost seems like a nuclear family and I uh, when I was around 16 kind of distanced myself from that and became familiar with Thelema the product of Alistair Crowley um, but I still found heteronormative structures within that, like the Babylon and Therion being um, a Shiva Shakti conversion. Um, so, uh, speaking of Thelema, um, I the reason why I'm making this video is I wanted to talk about um, homonormative gods um, or homoerotic gods and what I find really interesting is um, these male groups like the Radical Fair, oh, I'm not really familiar with them so I'm just assuming that that some all male groups just, just work with male divinities like the Dianic Wiccans because they work with only female deities um, or some homoerotic groups, they still have that um, mother-father figure that um, is almost it's almost reminiscent of a divine couple that are heterocentric. Um, but I, I want to talk about a goddess right now that I feel is um, very homoerotic. Um, to lesbians and to homosexual men, um, I'm not going to digress, or I'm not going to talk about the lesbianism, because I'm not a lesbian, uh, but I am a homosexual male, and I find this god is very um, attuned with male homosexuality. I view her as a phallic goddess, which, of course, sort of seems like an oxymoron, uh, but there are some symbols like the snake and the torch and her pillar-like figures that resemble um, the Semitic goddesses from the Orient, which she's supposed to have come from, um, the phallic Diana of Ephesus, is, um, there are teeny statues that have been found that have been claimed to be Hecate that resemble teeny Diana of uh, Ephesus's or Ephesus's, I don't know how to fucking pronounce it. Um, but there's this interesting chant that Hecate says in the cry of the 27th Aether that was given that was given to Crowley when he was doing the I don't know what it's called. I'm not the Algerian working. Uh, but here's it. Um, she says, Hither, O Holy One, whose burden pulls at thy spine, Ho, 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 the two-headed god Janus plows thy back, sows habitations upon thy back, the many phallus queen of princely's loves, which are all sodomies, so that the Holy Ones laugh and shake with laughter, while the lords of mischief spend upon thee. Tutulu, down bounces from my back, the merry mad fetus faces, and the mission, gather ye sun roses, sun roses, gather ye from the split backside of the virgin. Um, concerning the holy ones that were in that chant or poem that I just read, um, in the Old Testament, there are these figures called the Kadesh, which are translated literally as holy or holy one. But the Kadesh in the Bible were 
figure or were representatives of this goddess that I mentioned earlier from the Orient that has a connection with Hecate. Uh, the Holy Ones were sacred prostitutes for the goddess. Um, Uh, she talks about the two-headed god Janus, which is, you, know, you can compare that word to anus, anus. Um, plows thy back, stelicitations upon thy back. Uh, basically, pulling out and coming on someone's back. Um, sodomies, the holy ones laugh and shake with laughter at their mistress, mischief. Down dances from thy back. Reminiscence, uh, or, um talking about sperm, um, but I just wanted to talk about a homoerotic inclined phallic goddess that I found interesting and I hope you guys enjoyed. This is one of my first YouTube videos, so bear with me. I know they all can't be great, but this is just me ranting and raving about penis goddesses, so enjoy.